So when I first started to cook, I mean, it's not like I didn't know how to use the broth, but I was being a little lazy. I wanted to have it on hand. And so I always would purchase you know, the Swanson organic vegetable broth. And then eventually I started going into organic, old organic, low sodium vegetable broth. But the problem with these is they had too much salt. This organic one has got 130 milligrams. There's four servings in here. This one has got 530 milligrams for four servings. So it does seem to be appealing to be able to buy it like this, because you know, it's not that much money, a couple bucks. The organic is a lot less salt compared to the non-organic. If you make your own, you save yourself having to deal with the salt issue, especially if you've got a problem with sodium. And that way it's a lot fresher and a lot safer. Now vegetables have salt. There's a low amount of salt in these. The correct amount that your body is supposed to take. And according to the start solution, don't use salt except for at the very end. But this is not the start solution. This is just a basic, ordinary vegan broth. And that's what we're going to be starting. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to cut up our vegetables. We're going to put in filtered water into our our stock pot and we're going to get started. Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living, a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Now this is filtered water, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that in. Hey. So after much studying, we finally found a system that works for us and also protects the environment. Yeah. I'm going to try to fill it about halfway. Right there. All right, so once you have your water, then turn on the, your gas range to high. Well, it's gonna take a while to heat up that, kind of, that much water. And next what we're gonna do is cut up the vegetables. Okay, so for something like this, these are the uh, charged stalks. They're very fibrous. Cut them up in small pieces. Now these are charred leaves, giant charred leaves. All right, these are beet stems, beet leaves. I've already taken the beets and I've cooked them and made a recipe out of that already. But I don't waste anything, not in my house. So it's the same thing. I cut them up short. All right, I forgot to mention to you that this is not ordinary water. This is alkaline water. So this will be an alkaline broth. Now, I don't know if you lose the alkaline portion of it when you cook it, but I do know that the water tastes much better. And 
And you will see that the putting an half of, wa of, of water of, in the pot is going to be sufficient because look, the water is raising and we still have the, the uh, Brussels sprout stems to put in. Okay, so now we're going to leave that alone. Next, we'll be cutting the Brussels sprouts leaves and they're gigantic as you can see they're over a foot wide so what we do I do here is I'm saving the leaves for a dish that I'm making and we're just going to put them put the leaves on the side okay so this is what it's going to be about so you just cut it down the stem can you see that yeah and then you save the stem for your broth. Now, I'm, we're going to speed this through because I'm sure you don't want me to talk to you while I'm trying to cut something like 20 leaves. You can see that some of these are pristine, but they have some large holes. I share my food with the bugs. I just deal with it. And I wash them really well on both, the, both sides that way I get the best of the leaf. No pesticides are in my garden. And the reason why is pesticides are bad for you. So the next pot we're doing is we're putting in the stems here. Now these stems take enormous amount of time to cook. You can see the pot's getting fuller. Now the beets are going to turn your broth red. I think it's just a beautiful way to go. Alright, we have a couple more charred stems to put in. And then all we have to do is let this cook. Now here's a twist that I'm adding to the broth. 
and it's not going to be used in the broth it's going to be used for my dogs and what I'm doing is I'm adding carrots in like this they're going to cook in the broth the carrots will impart a beautiful sweet taste to the broth and it may even change the color a little bit from red to or light brown orange just have to push, push them in and it's a dual purpose it feeds the dogs the dog my little puppies get a chance to have some delicious healthy vegetables and everybody's happy oh, that one's a little too big but it'll work just fine that's just a, a thing that you could do in your broth you can cook extra vegetables in there now there's no salt or pepper added to this stock so what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of a twist to the meal these over here are arugula seeds so arugula is a lettuce a peppery taste lettuce so when you taste one of these it's very peppery what we're going to do is we're going to stick them in this in this and we're going to leave them on the vine Now what I've done is I've lowered down the temperature from high to medium and I'm just letting things cook. It takes about an hour this way and if you do an Instapot it can do it. You can do broth in like 10 to 15 minutes. But I like to make sure that I get all the flavors in my broth. Just bought new silverware. You can already see it's got that beautiful amber look to it. Yeah, nope, not the right one either. There. And that's going to capture the juices and it's going to work just fine. All right, so we'll see in a little bit, almost towards the end of this process. All right, now you're thinking probably to yourself that with all of the broccoli in here and all of the cabbage, it's going to be, it's going to be very gassy for you to, 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 to eat. By putting in celery bottoms, Sell any celery. The celery has a natural property to be able to help you handle the gas better. It works really good in beans and it works on other things too. So we're going to just let that simmer. Actually, let's mix it in. Next thing you do is you turn off the, the gas. Now let me show you how you know it's ready. It's been over an hour, it's been cooking. You gotta get yourself a, a mitt because this thing is gonna be hot. You take your fork and you just poke it into the carrots. See how it breaks apart? It's gonna be perfect. All the carrots are, go all the way through. Pull it out to the front and you can tell, you see it's pliable, it's ready to go. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain this into a large pan and we're gonna watch it. We're gonna let it cool down so we can transfer it to freezer bags and put this away. Now this is dangerous hot work. Most cooks know that. So I used the biggest pot I had. It's quite heavy too. I'm trying to control it. Not easy. Pour sl slowly so that you don't hurt yourself. Now the second pot, the contents right over here where my finger is, is what you're going to be making your soup is. And this is going to be the broth for the soup, but it's also going to be the broth for other recipes as well. Instead of paying a ridiculous amount of money with salt and all things that you don't have, you have it already here. We're going to let it cool and I'll show you how I put it away. So what I did is I moved up the big bowls to the side of the kitchen. So you can see where the kitchen is at. And I put a lid on top. It's summer and there are flies. I don't want the flies to come in the soup or the broth. 
So what I did is I put a cover over the top of it. We don't have that many flies there, but I just want to protect them. Now this is going to take a while to cool down before I can put it away. So here what I'm doing is I'm removing the carrots. They'll be going in a separate container. And I'm also removing the, the seeds that I put in for flavor. We don't need those anymore. And I'm putting them in a bag so that way tonight when I'm getting ready for dinner I can easily put that in a blender and th make some soup out of it. Right now the broth in the other container is still way too hot to transfer to the freezer bag so we're gonna wait. This right here is relatively cool but we're gonna leave it open and wait a little bit longer before I stick them in the fridge. See there's the other one right there. Here are the carrots. There's nothing wrong with putting these in a the soup. They've been cleaned, they've been uh, peeled, but the dogs also love them too, so it's a win-win. I can use them for myself and I can use them for them. We had a video malfunction and the video with the finished broth in the freezer bags wasn't shown. These things just happen when you're doing videos. We just have to deal with it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching us and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye-bye now. If you like what you see, subscribe. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.